Welcome everyone, I'm Lex and this is a Borderlands 3 pre-release top 5 video. I'm very excited, maybe to the point of obsession right now. And I'm willing to spend every free second researching, learning, and creating guides and tips. I'm driven by finding that McNugget sauce. Nuggets. I want that Mulan McNugget sauce, Morty. Mulan. That's my series arc, Morty. Hell? If it takes nine seasons, I want my McNugget tipping sauce session. So you guys don't have to. This video will be focused on the top five highest potential exploitable skills within Borderlands 3. Conveniently recovering skills from every character. I think every character has the potential to be broken or OP. But if you guys remember back to Borderlands 2 days, we had skills like Zero's Boar that basically allowed players to one-shot bosses. We had Critical Ascen Ascension on uh, Zero as well, that paired with Alayuda made you pretty much able to take down any enemy as long as you could survive long enough to ramp up the damage. And of course, we had Salvador's Gun Zerking ability that in and of itself allowed players to dual wield some of the best guns in the game including the Uncupped Herald and Grog Nozzle that gave you max damage and max survivability. Now these these skills are all legendary. They allowed you to basically do anything, kill anything, um, save a ton of time, and we're going to take a look at the skill trees to see if we can find stuff that will help us do that in Borderlands 3. Now of course we're just speculating and we don't know all the guns that will pair up with these skills and there's a million other things that will go on but as I said I'm, I'm excited I can't wait to go and I'm willing to spend some time to try to do some some sleuthing to see if you can find some skills that are exploitable. Number 5. Flak. Flak has a skill in his hunter tree called Negavore. This skill gives you a 20% chance to make any hit on any part of the body a critical hit. This isn't the most complex skill ever, doesn't take a ton of ramp up, but could you imagine getting free criticals on a boss? Any gun that has a larger spread or has spread issues could benefit from this greatly as well. Also, if you're not Shroud or Tifu or some other aimbot, this is basically a numerical aim assist for you. I can see bosses that have more complex critical exposure spots benefiting from this as well. For example, remember fighting the warrior back in Borderlands 2? I can see this being a perfect skill to use when fighting those larger, protected critical hit spot bosses. Now I don't think this skill will be OP or completely broken, but certainly something that I think will be relied upon in greater difficulties in Borderlands 3. Number 4. Zane. In Zane's double agent tree, there's a skill called Double Barrel. The skill allows for the Digi clone to have the same weapon equipped as Zane, and does increase damage. This has the potential to be really broken depending on the guns that we have late game in Borderlands 3. I can see if you got like a Norfleet or something else that does massive damage and digi-clone that to your, your companion. This could cause absolute mayhem. You could be filling the screen with damage and it has the potential to be really broken depending on the different guns available. Number 3. Moe's. Moe's will actually claim the next few spots on this list thanks in part to her bottomless mag spec. Specifically, it's the Scrappy and Russian offensive skills. Now, Scrappy is a fairly basic skill on its own, as it only allows for some increased weapon swap speed and some improvements to handling as well as some mode switching abilities for the bear. But pairing this skill with the Russian offensive skill is where things get really dangerous. This skill allows her to sprint and shoot at the exact same time. I can envision her now as one of the best speedrunners in the entire game and maybe a requirement for anyone looking to farm specific bosses that are set well behind checkpoints and would require long distances to be traveled. Bonus skill. To help break up the two Moe's skills, I'll throw in a bonus one. This one being Zane's double agent digi clone ability. Now this has a strong potential for combat, but the reason why it doesn't gain a spot is because I think it has a higher potential for map exploits and reaching hard to find areas. The cool thing about the digi clone is you can throw it out creates a clone of you, and you can swap places with that clone. Now stuff like this always seems to break the game. You think about in World of Warcraft, the blink ability, um, any other game that has some sort of teleport or some sort of sw position swapping ability tends to allow for more exploits to be happening, which is great and fun, but not necessarily a combat advantage. 
Number 2. Back to Moe's. This time, it's with our Shield Retribution Tree. There are two skills in here that when paired, could potentially be the strongest pairing in the entire game. The skills are Phalanx Doctrine, which gives you stacks of damage and max shields on kills for 30 seconds, stacking indefinitely, and Force Feedback, which recharges your shields on crit. The reason this doesn't make number one is because of its reliance on ramp up time and chain killing, and it's unclear how dense enemies will be in Borderlands 3. But if you get a string of enemies together, you could potentially stack this for some serious damage and survivability, allowing you to snowball out of control and take on any enemy in Borderlands. These two skills complement each other so well by giving you damage and survivability, and I also did some messing around and found out that you can fit Scrappy and Russian Offensive from the number 3 pairing on this list for more speed and more chain kills. This combo has the highest potential from what I can see thus far, it's just its ramp up time and room for error that bump it down to the number 2 spot on this list. Number 1 on this list, Amara. Amara's Fist of Elements tree has the Dread skill, Ties That Bind, and Indiscriminate. Amara also having a phase lock in general is just a massive leg up. The ability essentially stuns an enemy, but her Dread skill gives her increased damage and full weapon reload on kill for grasp enemies. This alone is exceptionally strong. Imagine running a quick shooting shotgun that has issues with ammo and getting a free reload on kill. And you also have increased damage, don't forget. Add in the skill ties that bind, it basically creates an AoE effect around your grasp enemies, doing reduced damage, but to everyone in your radius. And let's not forget, you're already doing increased damage due to the dread skill itself. Lastly, you have indiscriminate, which allows your bullets to ricochet to other targets at a 60% rate for 25% reduced damage, this is potentially insane for room clearing AoE on demand, and does not require the ramp up time that we saw with Moe's. Overall, there's going to be some really fun builds for Borderlands 3, but if I had to put my money down now, I think Moe's is going to be the most broken overall. She has the potential to be one of the best farmers, and has her high potential for damage as well. I actually do worry that she might get nerfed at some point, because she seems so far and above other characters with their ability to sprint and shoot at the same time, paired along with ramping in indefinite stacks of damage. But regardless of who you choose, there's great potential in all the characters, and I'm sure you'll have a good time regardless. Thank you guys for watching, please like and subscribe.